Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at indices. If you haven't already, then please do check out my other video on thirds, as these two topics are often looked at together. I'm going to first show you negative and fractional indices, and then the laws of indices, and then together we'll look at six exam style questions. I hope it's helpful. Let's get started. Let's start with some examples. I want to go through what negative and fractional powers actually do. So let's start with this one up here. We've got some negative powers. Now a negative power actually flips things upside down. So the negative is going to send the 5 down to the bottom of a fraction. If we have a negative 2, that 2 will stay with the 5 at the bottom of the fraction. So it will be 1 over 25. Fractional powers are completely different. Fractional powers are actually roots. So that's the square root of 4. Now whatever number is on the bottom of the fraction is whatever number goes with the root. So the square root is normally just written without the 2 there, but that's kind of a silent 2 there. So the square root of 4 is 2. Now because this one has a 3 on the bottom of the fraction, it will be a cubic root. And then we do write the 3. So the cubic root of 27 is 3. It's really useful actually if you can just know that one off by heart. Now when you have a fraction that has a number on the top that's not 1, that 2 can actually stay with the 27. So the 3 on the bottom is going to make it a cube root, but the 2, because it's the numerator, that's going to stay there. So now you can do the square or the cube root either way round. Obviously it's more helpful and easier to do the cube root before you square it, otherwise 27 squared is quite a big number. So the cube root of 27 is 3, and then that squared would be 9. Now let's look at the last example that has a negative and a fraction. Now the negative, as we know, flips everything upside down. And we're left with just the fraction. Now that fraction gives it a square root. So the square root of 36 is 6 and that will be five. Okay, it's worth practicing a few more of those before we continue, so grab a paper and pen and have a go at these next ones on your own. Okay, have a go at evaluating these, pause the video and come back. And very well done if you got this right. Okay, now that you understand fractional and negative indices, these are the rules of indices that you need to know. And they're just saying that if you're timesing two things with powers, then you add the powers. If you're dividing, then you take them away. And if you have a power raised to another power, then you times those powers together. Now you need to know those for the following exam questions that we're about to do. And you might just do them instinctively. So now we're going to do six exam style questions. Please do have a go on your own and come back and compare the answers with mine. Okay, so to simplify this out, I'm going to take both of the bits individually and raise them to the power. So that's 16 to the power of 3 quarters times by x to the 12 to the power of 3 quarters. Let's take the 16 to 3 quarters first. You now know that that is. Okay, I hope you got that right. And now this bit here, if we've got a power to a power, then we times the powers. So we need to do 12 times 3 quarters. Now 12 times 3 quarters is the same as 3 quarters of 12, which is 9. Okay, do have a go at this one yourself.
Okay, so in this example I've split them up again. Don't forget that 2 to the power of 4, that's a place where some people drop some marks. So when I times these powers together I got minus 1. Now I've got x squared times x to the minus 1, so I'm going to add these powers. So 2 plus minus 1 is just 1. So that's 16 times just x to the power of 1, so that's just x. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do this one is flip the whole thing because there's a negative in the power. Okay, so I square rooted everything here. I hope you're happy that x to the 4, when you square root that, is x squared. Um, square rooting will just halve the power. And the reason for that is, if you're square rooting, then remember that's the same as saying it's the power of a half. So 4 times a half is 2. This one looks even harder. First thing, again, is there's a negative, so let's flip it all. Okay, so there I squared everything, so 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4, don't forget those ones. And with these powers, because it's a power to a power, we're times in the powers, a half times 2 is just 1, and 2 thirds times 2 is 4 thirds. Okay, this is a question I found in an Edexcel pass paper actually. So for each one we want to express them in the form of 7 to the power of just something. So the first one's the most straightforward, it's a fourth root, so that will be 7 to the power of a quarter. So in that case, k is a quarter. Okay, it's helpful to rewrite the root 7 as 7 to the power of a half. Now because they're times together, we can add the powers, that's 7 to the power of 1, so that will be... Do try and work with top heavy fractions as well, not mixed numbers, that's just a bit tidier. And because it's 1 over, we can also write that as 7 to the power of minus 3 over 2. Okay, and last one. And again, that one was just using the laws of the indices. I've rewritten 49 as 7 squared, and then those two will multiply. And then because these one, the terms are multiplying, the powers will add. Very good if you got those right. And last question, this is another one I found in a past paper. Again, we're just using laws of indices to rewrite it in a different form. Okay, it's helpful when you've got a fraction like this just to split it up into two fractions. And now because they're dividing, you can take these powers away. And 5 over 2 take away a half is 4 over 2, which is obviously 2. So that's the answer. Okay, very well done if you're getting this right. The last couple are about as tricky as they get. So keep on practicing and thank you so much for watching. Have fun.